Exam question revision video for GCSE solving quadratic equation. So our question is solve the equation 2x plus 5 in brackets times 3x minus 11 in brackets equals 7 and give your answers correct to two decimal places. So our thinking to start with is that if we multiply out the brackets we're going to get something to do with x squared. And this means we're probably dealing with the quadratic equation and when we solve these generally we put them equal to zero. So that gives us our first steps to take. First of all we'll need to multiply out the brackets so we can use the FOIL technique for this and the first in each bracket is 2x and 3x so we times them so 2x times 3x the outsides are 2x and minus 11 which we multiply then the insides are 5 and 3x so we multiply them and then the last ones are 5 times minus 11 and notice I've been very careful to make sure I include the minus sign it's, that's a, a common mistake is to miss that out and that can cause problems on next steps as well so we have to be careful so we multiply 2x by 3x to give 6x squared, that's 2 times 3 gives us the 6, and the x times x is x squared. 2x times minus 11 gives us minus 22x, 5 times 3x gives us 15x, and 5 times minus 11 is minus 55. We've still got one more bit to do because we've got two x terms and we want to combine them, so minus 22x plus 15x gives us minus 7x and we've still got our minus 55 there at the end. Okay, so that's what we've got and that's the original two brackets multiplied so that must be equal to 7 and as we thought we need to put this equal to 0 and to do that we need to take away 7 from both sides that will leave us with a 0 on the right hand side and it will leave us with 6x squared minus 7x minus 62 on the left. So we're all set up now to solve a quadratic equation and we need to do a bit more thinking. The question says two decimal places. Now this suggests that it won't factorize and that we'll need to use the quadratic formula and also because it's a calculator paper this adds confidence to this way of proceeding. Now you're very lucky to be given the quadratic formula but it's worth writing it down uh, in your answer just for your own clarity. So there it is written down and the most important thing at this point is to make sure that you get the right values for a, b and c. So a is the coefficient of x squared so it's whatever's multiplying x squared so that's 6 in this case b is whatever's multiplying x and I've put a bracket there to show you must remember to include the minus otherwise of course it's going to go wrong and for c that's the constant but again you must include the minus now a good idea is to enter all that into the quadratic formula with brackets just so that you get all those negatives correct you may then want to do an interim step before you enter into the calculator of dealing with the negative. So minus minus 7 is of course plus 7. Minus 7 squared is the same as 7 squared because the minus will multiply away. And then we can see that for that last little bit we've got minus 4 times 6 times minus 62. So that turns into a plus and by doing that step it's not essential but it does mean that you can enter it accurately into the calculator and you also may want to work out the numbers under the square root with the calculator giving you this you can of course enter the light green one straight into the calculator you can enter the original one straight into the calculator but these are steps that will help you to avoid errors Okay, so now we have this, and we think about this, and obviously we're going to use a calculator. I couldn't resist typing it, but there we are. But we do need to be careful. 
it's very easy to make mistakes at this stage. The best way to use the calculator is to use the fraction button and then enter the top and the bottom. Of course you can't put plus or minus, you have to deal with the plus first. So we press equals and we get 3.8503 etc. We then have to be careful to make sure we get this correct to two decimal places and I'm not advocating that you draw on your calculator but you consider the digit after the second decimal place is that five or above? No, so we're just left with 3.85 then we can scroll with the cursor in order to change the plus to a minus we then press equals again we look at the digit after the second decimal place it's less than 5 and so we can ignore it and we get x equals minus 2.68 now at this point or later on perhaps when you've finished and you're checking back through your paper it's worth putting these values into those brackets so you do 2 times 3.85 plus 5 bracket 3 times 3.85 take away 11 and see what that comes to. It won't be exactly 7 because we've rounded off, but it will be very close to 7 if we've got it right. Now, there's a bit of extra stuff on the video not to do with this actual question, so we're looking at an alternative question, and this could be asked, instead of give your answers to two decimal places, they could say give your answers in third form. Now in fact it's likely to be much simpler numbers if they do ask you this sort of question but we'll have a look seeing as we've been thinking about this quadratic and the thinking on this one is that because it says third then there will be square roots involved and that in itself suggests that it probably won't factorise and we'll need to use the quadratic formula not necessarily but most likely so there's the quadratic formula again and of course We've already done the working to get to here, so we get to this point and then we present our answers as x equals 7 plus root 1537 over 12 or 7 minus the square root of 1537 <laughs> over 12. And then just thinking a bit more widely about this situation, we're solving the equation 2x plus 5 times 3x minus 11 equals 7 we found that that then becomes 6x squared minus 7x minus 62 equals 0. So graphically the darker green curve is the original function 2x plus 5 times 3x minus 11 the light green is y equals 7 and the red is our version 6x squared minus 7x minus 62 and it's y equals of course these are all uh, functions of x. So you'll notice then that the two answers we got cross these two curves and the line interestingly. The two green curves cross at these values and that makes sense because that's where they're equal to each other. The red curve is equal to 0 at these values and again that makes sense because 6x squared minus 7x minus 62 needs to equal 0. So that's how they link up. And just one last thing, you'll notice there's a purple dotted line and that's at 7 over 12. And that actually goes through the minimum point or where these curves get to their lowest. And you can get that by looking at the answer from the quadratic formula and what that shows us is that the plus or minus square root of 1537 over 12 of course because that's divided by 12 as well as the 7 that when you add it on takes us up to 3.85 when you subtract it takes us down to minus 2.68 and you're adding or subtracting it from 7 over 12 and so that means that your 7 over 12 is bang in the middle there